Good morning, everyone. Let me see if you can hear me. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Thank you for coming to our session. I'm Jasmine Lusain. I'm a public health analyst at the Office of Minority Health and the Office of the Assistant Secretary of Health. And I'm David Rickless uh, with Booz Allen, and I support the uh, Geospatial Research Analysis and Services Program at CDC. Um, today, we'll be presenting an introduction to the Minority Health Social Vulnerability Index. So the Minority Health Social Vulnerability Index um, is an extension of the CDC Social Vulnerability Index. And the CDC combines the demographic data from the U.S. Census into four themes. That is the socioeconomic status, household composition and disability, minority status and language, and housing and transportation. And the Minority Health SVI extends the minority status and language themes and adds two additional themes. And those themes are healthcare infrastructure and access and medical vulnerability. Um, in 2021, the Office of Minority Health partnered with the CDC to launch the Minority Health SVI. And in as an extension of the CDC SVI, it combines the 15 social factors included in the original CDC SVI with additional factors associated with COVID-19 outcomes. Um, the Minority Health SVI also expands the minority status and language themes, as I previously stated, and it includes statistics that are specific for race and ethnicity categories and languages. So the Minority Health SVI um, enhances existing resources to support the identification of race and ethnic minority communities who are at greater risk for disproportionate impact and adverse outcomes due to the COVID-19 pandemic. During the pandemic, racial and ethnic minority groups and other groups who live or work in settings that put them at higher risk of becoming infected or exposed to hazards experience worse outcomes. Um, and this is confirmed because we largely saw that the existing disparities associated with the social determinants of health um, and underlying health conditions. Health equity is a state where everyone has a fair and just opportunity to attain their highest level of health. It is our ultimate health goal. And Health disparities are the problem we are working to, to address. Health disparities are preventable differences in the burden of disease, injury, violence, or in opportunities to achieve optimal health experience by socially disadvantaged, racial, ethnic, and other population groups and communities. Measuring health disparities is essential to advance in health equity. Because social determinants of health contribute to health disparities and inequities, they are the pathway we are taking to drive meaningful change. Health, is health inequities are driven by social determinants of health. Um, the Healthy People 2030 identifies five social determinant health domains. Do do those domains are education, access, and quality, healthcare, and quality neighborhood and built environment, social and community context, and equal stability. Economic stability, I'm sorry. Social determinants of health are the conditions and the environments where people are born, live, where, where people are born, live, learn, work, play, worship, and age that affect a wide range of health, functioning, and quality of life outcomes and risk. Identifying socially vulnerable areas can help to inform evidence-based, data-driven public health emergency response activities that are tailored to communities at greatest risk and can help combat health inequities. Social vulnerability is a manifestation of negative social determinant of health conditions. This is an overview of social vulnerability indexes. 
Social vulnerability is the potential negative effects on communities caused by external stresses on human health. Reducing social vulnerability can decrease both human suffering and economic loss. A number of factors, including poverty, a lack of access to transportation, and crowded housing may weaken a community's ability to prevent human suffering and financial loss in a disaster. And now I'll turn it over to David to go into more detail about the Minority Health SVI and CDC SVI. All right, thanks, Jasmine. So uh, CDC SVI uh, is a, a demographic index that was developed from uh, ACS or uh, census data to uh, help emergency planners and public health officials plan for disasters and understand which communities might be more at risk. And so that includes what we call natural disasters, but it also includes public health emergencies like uh, COVID-19. And during co the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the geospatial program at CDC worked with uh, HHSOMH to develop the Minority Health SVI, an extension of CDC SVI. And so a few of the differences to highlight here, uh, the most significant differences uh, structurally are the addition of two new themes. And so you can see in the uh, lower right of the chart, uh, the Minority Health SVI includes data on healthcare infrastructure and uh, geographic access to healthcare facilities. And it includes measures of medical vulnerability. And uh, these were developed uh, with COVID-19 in mind and uh, play a role in other uh, health issues as well. The other major differences or additions with Minority Health SVI uh, were looking at the race and ethnicity variables and the language variables. And so Minority Health SVI is going to include uh, not just a uh, percent uh, that identifies with a racial or ethnic minority population, but uh, specific uh, identities within that population. And we'll get more into details of that in just a minute. Similar with language, rather than just capturing uh, limited English proficiency, it captures individuals with limited English proficiency who primarily speak uh, one of several languages. And so it's it's moving in the same direction. It's it's uh, fulfilling a similar purpose, but provides a little bit more detailed information uh, for the end users. So now I'm going to get into a few specific use cases for the Minority Health SVI, and uh, we'll we'll start by talking about use cases for indices like this broadly. Uh, so the CDC ATSDR SVI, um, as I said, focuses on socially vulnerable populations during public health emergencies. Uh, importantly, it uses census data, which is publicly available and uh, uh, is designed so that it can be extended and customized by different groups who wanna use it for specialized purposes. Uh, and it was developed by CDC in the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, and that's who currently manages it. So uh, CDC, ATSDR, SVI, bit of a long acronym. It's used uh, by emergency planners to decide the emergency personnel needed uh, and to plan the best way to evacuate or otherwise respond to an emergency based on the populations that may be at risk. Uh, health officials use it to identify areas in need of emergency shelters and estimate the amount of supplies needed. And state and local health departments, uh, nonprofits use it to guide community-based health promotion initiatives. And if you uh, read research in this area, you may have come across it being used in a wide variety of research applications. And uh, one of the most useful things about it anecdotally is that uh, census data can be challenging to wrangle sometimes. And these uh, indices provide a 
convenient pathway to get access to that data and to uh, incorporate it into your research or into your planning efforts. So we have some examples here about how this customized minority health SVI can be used. It's intended to apply a health equity lens to research, strategic planning, program design, and evaluation related to response and recovery from, from uh, COVID-19 and other public health emergencies. Specifically, it can be used, uh, it, both the database and the dashboard, which we'll see in a minute, can be used to plan targeted and equitable testing, vaccine, and treatment distribution and administration efforts, to identify communities with limited English proficient individuals and the languages spoken in those communities uh, who may need language assistance for outreach and efforts and services, to support program planning and evaluation efforts, including those that may link the Minority Health SVI with other databases, to identify medically under-resourced communities in which strategic efforts are needed to improve infrastructure and access, to plan community level efforts to address systemic factors related to social determinants of health, to help decide how many uh, public health and emergency personnel are required to assist people in case of emergencies at the county level, to inform the design of targeted programs and services to address chronic disease disparities because it does include chronic disease outcomes, and to inform research examining uh, the connections between socioeconomic factors, healthcare infrastructure, and demographic characteristics. So hopefully it starts uh, you know, making uh, that data accessible for research and also uh, helps initiate that conversation. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the technical background. That is, that's where I came in on this. So uh, the HHS OMH provided uh, subject matter expertise and generally led the, the direction and the, the concept of this project. And uh, uh, my team came in with uh, more of the uh, data development and technical side. So I'm going to get into that a little bit here. Demographic uh, data for the index came from the American Community Survey from the census. The uh, Homeland Infrastructure Foundation level data set uh, from Homeland Security is the source of the facility location. So pharmacies, urgent cares, hospitals, and this is a publicly available data set as well. All of these are publicly available. HRSA, uh, IHME, and the CDC are the sources for uh, medical vulnerability and uh, pre-existing conditions and also the uh, number of primary care physicians, which is a variable included in the healthcare uh, infrastructure and access theme. So uh, a high level overview of the methods. Uh, if any of you are data people, uh, come find me after. We can talk more about this. Uh, but um, I'm going to go over it in a high-level overview here. So the bulk of the work for this project involved uh, really just pulling together all the data from different sources. And uh, the census data we access through the census's application programming interface, and uh, other data is downloaded and prepared for some geographic analysis. And then the uh, index values themselves are, uh, I'm not a math guy, but, but the math people tell me it's a pretty simple calculation, and uh, we do it on a database, which makes it uh, easy to replicate, it makes it very reproducible, uh, but the design is, is such that, uh, you know, it can be extended or adjusted as needed. So uh, there's work up front, but it makes it easy to change down the road. And then, uh, Probably the most uh, fun part from a technical standpoint was the visualization aspect. So uh, we published layers in a uh, geographic information system uh, called ArcGIS and uh, built some data dashboards, which were published via the CDC's OneMap uh, system. And this is an off-the-shelf data viz product that uh, provides robust features for geographic data. So uh, if you haven't heard of that or worked with that before, you may have... Uh, work with Power BI or Tableau or be familiar with those. It's very similar, uh, just more focused on maps. 
and this is geographic data, so that's what we wanted to focus on. However, if there was a need to create more customized charts or you know, reproduce it in a different way, it's also compatible with uh, those other business intelligence uh, programs. So the next thing I want to show is a demo of the uh, interactive dashboard uh, that we developed that I just talked about here. And this is available on the HHS website. Um, so I'm going to try to play this video. I may need some tech support on it, but we'll see. Let's see. Bear with me a second, friends. Well, do we have do we have a tech person for the screen, or if not, I can just talk through it. It's no big deal. All right, I'll just talk through it. Uh, So I'm getting a blank screen now. Okay. Okay, here's the video. Thank you. Sorry for the hiccup, folks. So uh, what this uh, offers is a map interface. Uh, on the right, you see, obviously, a map of the United States by county. And you can move around in the map, just like Google Maps or anything else. You can zoom in. And what it's showing right now is the overall uh, vulnerability ranking by county. So you can see in the legend there how it's broken down by uh, percentile rankings. There is a layer for each of the individual themes. So we can turn off the overall ranking and we can view an individual theme. Uh, at the county level as well, if we want to focus on something else. We can also click on a particular county and it will show the statistics for that county. So it will show the uh, percentile rankings of the, each individual theme if you're interested in a particular area. So it's zooming back out now, and you can see if you direct your attention to the bar chart towards the middle of the screen, you can see that that chart is adjusting on the fly. So when we move around in the map, it's looking at the map and it's showing you the average values for the area that you're looking at. And this is, a, I think, a useful addition because it lets you see how each of these individual variables actually contribute to the overall theme. So we're not just looking at the overall picture. We can even turn on and off variables uh, to see how they compare to one another. And so that's demonstrating some examples of that now, uh, where we can select individual pieces of the puzzle and see how they contribute overall. And all those will adjust when you move around on the map. So you can, there's some interaction there. So it's demonstrating, turning them all back on now. And then moving over to the far left, there are some filters. So you can select a state. And when you select a state, it's selecting Georgia, where I live. That's the one I happen to be familiar with. It will filter the map to show that state. And it will adjust the bar chart to show the stats for that state. We can also select an individual county within the state, and then it's going to show the numbers for that county. So probably seeing a pattern here. The point is drilling down. We can drill down and we can see more information uh, as needed. So then we'll go back to all the counties and all the states. and zoom the map out just a little bit. And then the last feature to demonstrate is filtering based on the uh, percentile rankings. So uh, let's say we want to see 
the counties uh, where um, overall vulnerability is uh, greater than 80th percentile. And so these uh, sliders on the far left here might be hard to see on the screen, but there's a little handle on the left for zero and a handle on the right for 100th percentile. And we can drag those handles to narrow down the counties that we're showing. So we can say uh, for socioeconomic status within the most vulnerable counties, uh, what one, where are those counties? What's the pattern there? And two, uh, what are the average individual variable uh, values for those counties? And uh, that's meant to be a starting point for some exploratory analysis, you know, uh, Maybe you don't want to have your data people go and write a bunch of code and, and really you know, get super deep into it until you know uh, at a high level what's going on. And so hopefully this provides some way of visualizing that in an efficient way. And then uh, this is just in case you look at it on your own, there's a lot of information about the data sources and the documentation available here. So uh, not the most exciting stuff, but it is important. I think we're doing questions in just a minute after the presentation concludes, if I remember correctly. So I believe that is the end of the video. If we can go back to the slide and I'll send it to the last slide. I guess in closing, what I would say is uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a data viz person. So I think this is cool in and of itself. And uh, as, as public health and health equity people, we all, you know, it doesn't need to be repeated how important the, you know, equity aspects of, and thinking about these uh, challenges are. I, I do know a lot of you have probably seen a lot of dashboards, right? So what I would really offer here is that this is a example of, I mean, hopefully you'll use it and you'll find it useful in your work. I also think it's an example of taking this data that's publicly available there's no additional cost for actually going in the field and collecting data. It's available. It's not always uh, available, you know, when and where we need it. And it's uh, spinning up a uh, visualization that makes it useful for a broader audience. So this is something that can be repeated for your data sets. It can be repeated for uh, partners you work with and um, really getting hopefully more use out of uh, data that we already have um, on these topics. Uh, so uh, with that, I'll just say, uh, feel free to, well, the screen's over there, feel free to reach out to uh, either of us with questions afterward, but uh, for now, I think we're ready to take some questions live. Thank you. Sure. So the question is, is a two-part question. Uh, so one is, are the data downloadable in a spreadsheet? And the other question is whether county is the lowest geographic scale or whether uh, we can get zip code or lower. Uh, so the first question answer is yes. Uh, you can download it as a CSV and there's a, a data dictionary and uh, it has all the variables, all the intermediate calculations, the overall rankings. Uh, so that's available. Uh, the answer to the second question is uh, a little more complicated. So for the Minority Health SVI, uh, there are some data, primarily the health come out, healthcare outcomes data, uh, chronic conditions outcomes that uh, we didn't have at the uh, sub-county level uh, publicly available. So the index overall is not available below county level. And that's something we've heard feedback from, frankly, that you know, it would be useful if we had you know, tracked or something. CDC SVI, which this is based on, goes to the tracked level. And that's because uh, it's only based on American Community Survey, which is available at the tracked. So if you're interested in the underlying data behind this, some of the data are available uh, at tracked level or zip code, but the overall index is county only at this time.
So uh, could you just repeat the the data set you were referring to just for the, the Zoom crowd? Okay, so the University of Wisconsin Neighborhood Atlas, and the question is whether this is intended to replace that. Uh, I mean, that's that's probably is more of a question for uh, OMH. Uh, I, as far as I know, it's meant to you know be a new product for people to try. I don't think it's meant to replace, rather you know just add on. But if you want to add to that, yeah, um, I was I would add that I don't think it's meant to replace, but to be a supplement and an additional tool to help inform your work. So the question is whether the housing uh, vulnerability theme includes uh, ownership or uh, tenure uh, because of that being relevant for, you know, uh, reducing vulnerability and resilience measures. And uh, so the short answer is it, it doesn't uh, right now, uh, but that's a very good suggestion. So I like that idea and, you know, I'll definitely pass that along. I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? I didn't hear the first part. Um, I'm not, there, there's for integration, it is not, and not, not necessarily a one-off, but an additional tool. Um, does that answer your question? Uh, so, uh, I would say that it can be merged. The MHSVI can be merged with other tools. Uh, that is something that we see from time to time, uh, in research data. So, uh, someone will use the vulnerability index to pull in the data that that includes, and then they'll, they'll add in other factors for their modeling efforts. Uh, so, uh, the question specifically was about mapping Medicare disparities, which, uh, I don't actually recall, I'm familiar with that. I don't recall if it's at county or state level, uh, but the short answer is yes, it, it should be technically feasible if there was an interest in that. Question. Great question. So the question is whether uh, we would uh, consider expanding it to Puerto Rico. And uh, that is something we've talked about. And so, uh, again, I'll give the short answer first. Short answer is yes. 
the longer answer is this is designed to uh, align with CDC's social vulnerability index, which does include Puerto Rico uh, separately. So for various reasons, they they calculate the index for Puerto Rico uh, at the uh, at the track level there, uh, and it's separate from the uh, entire national index. And uh, we are working on an update of MHSVI uh, to bring it in align with the 2020 CDC SVI, uh, which is the most recent census data. And uh, the plan is to include Puerto Rico in that. Okay. So mapping Medicare disparities is at the county level confirmed. Uh, and there's a lot of indices out there, right? So that's something that if there's other index folks in the crowd, we should get together sometime this week and talk because I think there needs to be more conversation. I'm sorry, I'm editorializing a second, but I think there needs to be more conversation about how all these fit together. So uh, in alignment with the CDC SVI, just because there's so much similarities, uh, that is updated about every two years. And uh, it's just based on uh, when there's a new uh, American Community Survey five-year estimate release, and uh, then it takes about a year. Those, those lag about a year behind the actual year that they're um, representing, and then it's about a year of development to get a new index put together. So about every two years. <laughs> yeah, so a uh, question about where to get started looking at all these indices and uh, some recommendations. Uh, I hesitate to give recommendations because I don't want to, uh, you know, leave anybody out. Um, I do think this is this uh, MHSVI is is a, a solid offering, uh, of course, and as is CDC SVI, uh, depending on you know how important those individual factors that come into them are. Area deprivation index was mentioned. Uh, that's one that I've heard of. Uh, and there's, um, I mean, I think I think probably a key differentiator is the early indices came out of the. Uh, emergency management and uh, disaster research fields. And they were really about if a hurricane hits, you know, how hard is it going to be to recover? And then that model has been used to bring in other variables. So what I would, what I start with when I am looking at them is what is the, because ultimately vulnerability is, is a construct that we're trying to represent with data. So what construct am I looking for? Is it disaster resilience? Is it sensitivity to health emergency? Is it um, lack of uh, financial resources? I would start with what I'm interested in um, really representing and then see what's out there for that. So happy to talk more afterward. Mm -hmm. 
my friends are saying, have more available to you. Don't be happy. And she says, there's so much variability within the cloud group. And I think that's a uh, really quickly a really good point that a lot of these things vary depending on where you are. You know, the needs of of uh, Southern California are different from Puerto Rico, which are different from you know Northern Virginia. So I think the structure, having the structure, and then being able to customize it is is very good. And that's a really good question. So to re repeat her question, she's essentially asking, how do we integrate this quantitative data with qualitative data, which is, to me, um, I'm a public health person, so it really lends to what policies, what we can implement and take from this data, and how can we paint the picture and inform our programs. Um, at the Office of Minority Health, and I'll try to answer the, your question the best as I can, um, for one of our NOFOs or Nunding of Funding Opportunities, um, for our advanced and health literacy NOFO, um, one of the grantees actually implemented um, and used our minority health and CDC SVI to help inform COVID-19 response. Um, and from that, they were able to take that data to help inform their program to, and they were also able to identify areas and gaps in the minority health SVI and CDC, um, some questions and improvements that we can offer data that we could use to improve um, and find questions for those gaps and what they, those um, disparities that they were finding in those communities. No, you're fine.
So if I could sort of try to synthesize some of this for uh, the Zoom audience. Well, no, I mean, you, this is all like really eloquent. I just want to be sure it gets captured for the Zoom audience too. Um, that there's a lot of discussion about how these metrics, uh, which, you know, the data behind this are an example of, uh, they're these authoritative quote unquote data sources. They're sort of a top-down approach.